My name is uh, Dr. Prakash K.R. Uh, I am professor in the National Institute of Engineering, Mysore. Uh, earlier to that, I was a special officer at uh, VTU uh, here in Mysore Regional Center. And uh, today I will be talking about uh, uh, FPS, uh, fluid power systems, one of the topic called pneumatics. So to start with uh, introduction to pneumatics control, I will take. And slowly we can also have certain experiments and the circuits uh, which are, which are uh, usually uh, used in uh, pneumatics area will be covered during the topic time. As you all know, pneumatics, uh, 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 introduction to pneumatic controls, pneumatics means, pneuma means breathing. What we breathe is air. So, uh, with, uh, with that, uh, uh, or a wind in a Greek word. It is a Greek word. Uh, pneuma means breathing. So, pneumatics is the name given to the branch. Pneumatics is the name given to the branch of physics which treats with or deals with the properties of uh, motion and behavior of air. So, uh, today we will be talking about pneumatics. You should know what is pneuma means. Pneuma means it is a breathing. So, it is a breathing. So, this is very, very important. The word uh, has come from this word breathing. Normally, we breathe air. So, we are using the air here. In this, we use the air as the main media. Uh, in pneumatics control, compress, compressed air is used as a working medium. Normally, if you consider Normally, if you consider industry, industry uses two different uh, pressure ranges. So, one is between 6 to 8 bar which is called as a low pressure area and many applications falls under this uh, pressure band. So, 6 to 8 bar and one of the other uh, application area is a high pressure area. Here we go up to 15, 20 bars. So, where engraving, embossing, those kinds of uh, work will be done at a much higher pressure than this. Here at 6 to 8 bar, you can find applications like uh, door opening, closing, push, push pull kind of applications, ejecting, turning, all these kinds of applications you can find between these pressure ranges. So, using the pneumatic control, uh, normally we can get a, a maximum force up to 50 kilo Newton. Okay. So, by compressing the air and using it, we can use, uh, you can get around 50 kilo Newton force. Okay. Actuation can be uh, either manual or mechanical or by using some electrical means can be done. So, uh, sometimes compressed air at a pressure of 1 to 2 bar can also be used as a pilot operated uh, uh, thing. So, uh, then we call it as a uh, pilot operated circuits are the kinds of uh, applications. So, we can use the air as a piloting uh, source. Okay. Normally, uh, the electrical, when you come to electrical signals that we use in uh, pneumatics is DC or AC, we can use 24 volts to 230 we can, normally 24, 110 and 230 are being used. So, now, Today, taking safety into consideration, maximum we use a 24 volt DC as a major source in a many of the places. So, uh, now let us move towards what are the advantages. Now, we are using air when it compared with other uh, fluid power sources like uh, oil hydraulics. So, what are the differences or what is the advantages what we have in this domain when we use a air. So, the main advantages and disadvantages of pneumatic systems are, the advantages are unlimited supply. So, this is the one advantage. So, that means normally uh, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, get the air free. We do not charge air. So, it is abundantly available in the nature and there is no shortage. So, easily it can be transported through pipes uh, for a longer distances also uh, in the industries and it is a clean source of energy. 
So, you can uh, use the air, suck the air from the atmosphere, compress it and leave it back to the atmosphere and uh, during that process, uh, it is almost a clean uh, in nature. So, this is one of the major advantages and also ex it is not uh, uh, explode. So, that is another advantage, we do not have such problems of explosions in the air areas. So, unknowingly if you do a, some mistakes only you will have a problem, otherwise no such problems will be there. And uh, additional uh, advantages are, uh, we can control the speed, we can also control the force while working on a application or on the system side. Uh, it is overload safe, speed of uh, working elements is good compared to hydraulics, it works faster. So, that is why we call pneumatics as a uh, speed uh, device compared to hydraulics. So, it can move faster. It also has certain disadvantages. So, what are the main disadvantages is buying a compressor may be a some x cost may be 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs like that. But running that compressor for a year throughout the year day on day costs heavily for the company. So, for that reason running cost is high, preparation cost is high. Preparation here refers to when we take the air from the atmosphere, so we will be taking uh, along with it a dust particles and moisture. As you know, the air surrounding by us has a moisture also in it and a dust particle also in it. So, when you take such air within the compressor system, so it can also be carried forwarded to the next devices. So, we need to prepare and treat them to avoid problem due to that. So, means we have to remove them in the early stages. So, in the that we refer to as a preparation. So, uh, one more disadvantage is when we use a air in the system for any application, it makes little noise comparatively higher than hydraulic systems. So, air noises will be higher. So, when we release it to the atmosphere, it makes a little bit of noise and uh, uh, limited range of force compared to hydraulics. Hydraulics can be used up to uh, very high force requirements level, but whereas uh, air applications are limited to certain force level. So, this is the another disadvantage and uh, only economical up to some uh, 25 kilo Newton to 30 kilo Newton area. If you go beyond that, the compressor size will increase, the cost of running cost will increase. Uh, so, you will not be running it economically over a period of time. So, this is the one of the major disadvantages. Uh, now, as said in the early slide, so the advantages of this pneumatics is taking it forward even today in the industry environment. Many applications are uh, uses a air as a source and we use a pneumatics in many areas. So, because we have a high speed and inexpensive and uh, it is a matured technology, uh, for a long time we are using it without any uh, problem and hazards. So, that is the one of the major advantage and uh, every device which are uh, uh, today available in the market. So, they are they give a good uh, uh, life. So, it can work for a longer time with a good reliability and performance. So, that is one of the advantage and uh, safer and even hence can be used in various areas like LPG bottling, petroleum refining, coal mines, uh, any of the those areas which are referred to as hazardous areas also. So, there we can use the pneumatic care. Now, I will move on to a, some of the major applications of this uh, pneumatics. So, general applications of pneumatic control is clamping, when you want to clamp an object before it is being machined, uh, either drilling or uh, uh, milling, any kind of operations that you want to do it or fine boring kinds of operation that you do, you have to initially clamp the object or sometimes you have to clamp a, uh, a, 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 some devices uh, earlier to what you are trying to do it on the component side. 
So, such kind of applications that is clamping applications, shifting and lifting kinds of application you can use, metering, orienting, feeding, ejecting or ejection, breaking, bonding and locking. These are the areas uh, the pneumatics is uh, being used. Not only these areas, we have only listed few applications. It is, it is extensively used in many other. If you go to textile industries, it is highly uh, pneumatics oriented uh, uh, process. So, they need a lot of compressed air in their uh, uh, mills, text, textile mills and many of the weaving and uh, uh, thread winding applications will run through a pneumatics application. Lot of applications are there in the industry side. Few more applications of pneumatics is packaging, feeding, door uh, controls and uh, transfer of material, turning or inverting of parts, sorting of parts, stacking of components, stamping and embossing of components, all these are the thing. If you observe today's manufacturing uh, uh, this, so suppose if you go to a, a Benz manufacturing unit, the maximum number of robots are being lined up and the process is automated on a line automation and the whole component without any uh, human requirements can move from one end to the other. In such area, the robotics uh, will also be moved using uh, air uh, for its moments of the jaws and holding and other kinds of applications. So, as you see here, this sketch will show enormous potential of using air as a, a major source of uh, uh, application in industries. Few more applications uh, uh, with respect to the manufacturing operations if you consider, if you take a manufacturing operation side, so you can do all these operations like drilling, turning, milling, sawing, all this. And the companies which comes under all these kinds of uh, thing is uh, automobile production, petroleum, petrochemical, food, robotics, uh, in vibrators, especially uh, few of the vibrators uses air. Uh, to uh, vibrate and do a deburring actions, uh, deburring, de deburring of the metals and other things, grinders and uh, thread cutters, lot of applications we can find it on the industry side. So, now uh, when you choose the working medium, when you want to choose whether you want to use a pneumatics or hydraulics, so you should know minimum uh, 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 what are the advantages of it and what are the properties of it and which one to be selected uh, to have a proper action on the application side. So, I will be uh, taking pneumatics and hydraulics parallelly. Uh, in, in pneumatics area, higher speeds usually bit, uh, 1.5 to 3 meters per second, but if you compare the same speed here, it, it, it can give between uh, 0.5 up to 0.5 only, up to 0.5 meters per second means comparatively this is slower compared to the pneumatics. So, in fine operations where the precision levels are very high, so hydraulic is choice, whereas you want to speed up the process, pneumatic can be used. Okay. So, force available here is uh, 50,000 Newton. Here it is uh, uh, in turns basically. So, 50, uh, 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 5 lakh uh, and above you can go. And uh, pneumatics can be used in a high temperature areas. So, without any difficulty you can go up to 200 degree centigrade. Uh, whereas, in hydraulics there is a small uh, disadvantage here. If, you, if the temperature increases, uh, you will have a problem. So, the maximum is uh, 100. So, even 100 is not suggested in the industry side. Even at 70, 80 degree itself, you can have a lot of uh, errors in your production line and it can cause a problem to the uh, tolerances and sizes of the products and other kinds of issues can start. So, the disadvantage with the uh, hydraulics is temperature it cannot be worked in the high temperature environments much. 
and the cylinder force is proportional to the amount of air entering here. Cylinder travel is again proportional to the enter of oil entering into the cylinder and highly controllable. Here also we can control, but here it, it is a very precision controls can be achieved. With servo pneumatics we can do it, but still it has its own advantages in precision control, uh, oil hydraulics has its own advantages. Uh, well suited for delicate handling jobs, it is it can handle a high loads, so it can be uh, used as a major power unit to do a high high loaded applications. So cylinder position is not predictable here uh, under dynamic loads conditions. Here the position of the hydraulic cil cylinders can be predicted and controlled within a, a very small. Uh, very fine and accurate levels. So, that is the advantages of the hydraulics. Very well suited to handle a high starting loads also, uh, the hydraulics can take that uh, as a major thing. Now, in today's topic, I am not talking about hydraulics. In the earlier sessions, uh, 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 people have already have discussed about the hydraulics. Now, I will be talking about characteristics of compressed air. In the unit 5, we concentrate on compressed air systems and compressed air uh, related aspects. So, I will be talking about the characteristics of compressed air. The following characteristics of compressed air are to be considered. Uh, so, abundant uh, supply of air is available, transportation, storage, temperature, explosion proof, cleanliness, speed regulation and overload. So, these are the characteristics. When you see any pneumatic system, we have to connect the components of the pneumatic in a certain manner. So, structure of the pneumatics. So, how do we put the components in order to get the work done? So, normally, so this is the flow, it is a bottom to top flow, we call this as bottom up approach. So, that is from bottom. Uh, the air will travel to the different components, pneumatic components and finally, it will come to an actuator whether it is a rotary or a linear actuator and your motion will be executed on the actuator and that results into motion on an element or a machine tool or any uh, uh, connected devices. So, here uh, the air source is referred to as uh, with a symbol uh, like this, it is a filter, regulator and lubricator thing which is uh, been shown here. The next stage we call it as a signal input devices. So, here input elements are being used. Input elements means what? So, it can be a push button type of valves and uh, uh, lever type of valves. All those uh, input giving devices are the valves that come under this will be used here as a signal inputting devices. And in the next stage, we come across with a component called signal processing elements. So, signal processing elements are logical elements. So, you can use a AND valve, R valve, NOT valve, any of such kinds of valves can be used here in this phase. So, it helps you to create your logical circuits better. So, that is the advantage of this stage. So, we are adding on the logical elements in this uh, level to improvise our automation concept. And in the next stage, final control elements are being placed. Final control means here we use a 5 by 2 or 5 by 3 uh, operated solenoid valves okay. and from there uh, finally, we connect to a actuators whether it is a linear actuator or a rot rotary actuator. The same thing has been showed here. So, in a detailed manner, if you observe here, we use almost a 4 to 5 bar. So, that is the low pressure uh, thing. So, if you take that, it will move to a uh, directional control valves and then to the actuator finally. So, if you take greater than uh, 4 bar, again high pressure and then to uh, units and then to the uh, actuator. So, like this the different sources of energy uh, will move from bottom to top approach to the final element 
that is a actuator. Now, I will be concentrating on compressed air production. So far, we have understood uh, air and the difference between air and uh, hydraulics, okay, oil hydraulics related thing. And also, we have studied characteristics of air and its uh, availability and uh, transportability, all those things. So, now I will be moving on to production of air, how we make use of the air which is abundantly available in the nature, how we suck into the compressor, compresses and use it in the application. So, compressed air is required for a pneumatic control system, okay, uh, which is uh, uh, which uses a compressors, air compressors to suck the air and compress it along with some accessories. So, uh, like a compressor is connected to an intercooler, uh, uh, filters kinds of things and all those accessories, accessories will come along with the uh, compressed unit. And then some of the additional devices which we use it for the preparation of the air. When I say preparation of the air, basically the air quality has to be improved. That is we have to remove the moisture from it and also remove the dust from it. To do that, we use a lot of filters, lot of uh, dryers, those things will come under the air preparation area here. And uh, air regulation, you cannot supply the uh, prepared air, but you have to send a controlled amount of air into the system. So, we need a air regulator. And the air needs some lubrication. So, we also supply some lubrication through the air so that the parts gets lubricated and there won't be any more friction in the parts. So, uh, it will give an enhanced life of the components in the machine side or in the uh, device side. So, these are the uh, components that we use it in the. Now, let me uh, concentrate uh, about uh, the symbol which is used. The energy element is here, your uh, filter regulator uh, and lubricator unit. Symbolically, it is represented like this. It is a one unit. We also call this as FRL, filter regulator and lubricator unit. So, uh, all together it will be fitted in one device called FRL unit and it is in simple, it can be represented like this. In sometimes, if you do not want to show this also and you want to just show an uh, triangular thing that shows power source, that is a pressure source. We can show in these different methods. Now, coming to the compressors, air compressor is used for the generation of compressed air, uh, which is selected on the basis of how much capacity we want. So, that is in terms of uh, volume, so CFM or liters per minute uh, we select in the industry. Normally, what uh, we do is we take the total consumption of the industry of a shop or a complete uh, uh, plant and then we add a safety to it and then uh, taking the factor of safety, we increase the capacity of the compressor considering the future requirement and we can implement. Uh, such a compressor uh, uh, in the plant level. So, but also it is very important, it should not be oversized. If you oversize it, the running cost of the compressors will increase. Your uh, running cost over a period of time will, will be very high and you are losing money. So, do not do that. Optimization of optimized selection is uh, required here. And the following types of compressors are used. Uh, depending upon the required flow rates. We use uh, piston type, which is also referred to as reciprocating compressors. And the second one is rotary type of compressors. Here we have a vane type and a screw type of compressors. Third one is centrifugal type of compressors and axial flow type of compressors are available in the market. If I Take uh, classification of uh, or the types of compressors here. So, we can just broadly classify like this reciprocating piston compressors 
rotary piston type of compressors and uh, flow compressors again that can be divided into radial flow and axial flow. In the reciprocating which can be subdivided into piston type, diaphragm type, sliding vane type. There are three types which can be uh, considered here uh, in the reciprocating and in the rotary we can have a sliding vane rotary type, uh, two axle screw type of compressors, roots blower. So, this is how the classification uh, that we can make and accordingly you can select the types of the compressors. Now, I am showing you a, a picture of a reciprocating type of compressors. So, here two stage reciprocation is done. So, stage 1 and stage 2. So, hence we call it as two stage. So, uh, now in the initial stage air will be taken into this cylinder, it is compressed here and then it will be passed through a, an intercooler and then again it will be fed into a second cylinder which is uh, lesser in dimension compared to this and again it will be compressed here and subsequently you can get the much higher pressure here. So, when you do a multi-stage compression normally intercooling is preferred we need to uh, cool the air uh, before we send it to the next cylinders. So, compressors are preferred for a delivery pressure normally 8 bar uh, we use even a higher pressures are available in reciprocating up to 20 bar we can get it ok. Single or two stage compression is allowed with intercooling in the intercooling water in water cooled and air cooled there are again two types are available here. So, depending upon your requirement you can choose uh, either a water cooled or a air cooled type of intercoolers. Normally air flow rate of this will be around 20,000 cubic meters uh, you can get it. The second type of compressor shown here is diaphragm type of compressors. So, here we have a diaphragm and uh, a, a, a connecting rod and a, a crankshaft which is assembled like this. So, uh, this is a, a diaphragm type of compressors uh, which is uh, which has been used in the industry side and the third one is screw type of compressor. In industries normally reciprocating are this screws are being used in today's industries and uh, in screw compressors we get a stabilized air flow. So, there will not be any much fluctuation of the air. So, you can get a, a, a constant pressure uh, delivery here and screw compressors are used for a moderate flow rate and a moderate pressure up to 8 bar with a flow rate of 15,000 cubic meters. It has a greatest advantage of uh, noise free operation. So, they, they are uh, also coming with an enclosed chambers. So, even the compressor is running you, you would not find any noise in the surrounding areas in the shaft floor. That is also one of the requirement in some companies, noiseless operation of the compressors. So, which can uh, give such kind of environment. For example, I can tell you one wonderful uh, company uh, by name Atlas Capco, they produce crew compressors, even Kirloskars are doing within India. So, these compressors uh, works in the industry at a very uh, uh, decibel levels, low uh, noise levels and are catering to the uh, industry requirements. In the next figure, I am showing you vane type of compressor. Uh, here a, a rotor and a casing is there. So, th on this rotor the ra there are radial slots made, you can find these slots and in this slots the vane blades are inserted. As it rotates the blades move out and seals the periphery of the casing. So, hence it creates a pockets and as you rotate a vacuuming uh, will take the air in uh, air in and delivers it out ok. So, this is how uh, the rotation will be done. So, air will be sucked 
you can see the difference here light colored we have shown and as it moves the pressure also increases here and mainly the one of the important factor is the eccentricity of this rotor uh, with the uh, center of this casing is the important factor. Sometimes you can also vary this eccentricity uh, if required to make your design parameters to meet according to the requirements. Uh, we also have a axial flow compressors. So, in the axial flow compressors the figure is shown here. So, the blades are mounted on a radial uh, uh, rotor like this okay? and it, it axial flow compressors are suitable for a large flow rates with a low pressure. This is one very important uh, parameter you should understand. It can generate a low pressure compared to reciprocating and screw uh, it is low pressure around 4 to 5 bar uh, pressure can be generated. There you can go to 8 bar, 9 bar here it is not and only suitable for very large installations with uh, uh, multi stagging operations kinds of things where you want a flow more flow there you can use the thing. So, uh, other type of uh, compressors are centrifugal type of compressors. So, you can find a centrifugal compressor here in the figure. So, which is uh, ideally suited for a large flow rate with again uh, 4 to 5 bar pressure which can be in a many stages 4 or uh, 5, 6 stages different stages like this. So, it can handle a huge volume. So, volume can be uh, supported and provided using this. So, now we have completed uh, the different uh, types of compressors which are available. So, in all these compressors we take the air from the atmosphere and we compress it to different pressures and we supply it to the systems. But when we supply it like that, we cannot directly give it to the equipment. So, we should have a certain equipments in the middle. So, uh, the complete uh, uh, in the utility, we call this as a utility. In the utility rooms or the uh, area, we will have a compressor compressor gets connected to a receiver. So, which is a, a vessel which can store the air. So, uh, this is a receiver and from the receiver we take a line which may be uh, uh, MS lines normally will be taken or threaded and welded GI and MS lines can be taken uh, using uh, different valves connections in the middle. And when you take like this we give a little bit inclination, uh, little inclination. So, we make like this little, so that all the water particles which are there in the air will move fast and settle at the bottom. So, it, 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 it go fast here and you can drain out those uh, dust and water particles which are collecting here. And the dry air and the quality air can be tapped from the top side, if you observe it here, if you observe here, the air tapping is done from the top side, not from the bottom side. Always you should not do a hole at the bottom and take the air. So, you should uh, do a uh, top hole and take a bend like this and take it like this. So, when you take like this, a quality air will enter here comparatively. Uh, so, and that air again being sent through a, a service unit that is filter regulator and lubricator unit and then pass to the uh, machinery elements. So, this is how we, we will have a sequence of equipments placed in the utility which takes care of uh, removal of little bit of moisture and dust which are generated in the process. Uh, air compressor uh, in the air compressor systems, we can have uh, additional equipments like after coolers. So, which are used to cool the air. So, what happens when you cool the air is it leaves out the moisture. So, you can easily separate the moisture by adopting a uh, after coolers. 
So, your uh, uh, moisture removal uh, rate will be uh, depending upon the type of the cooler that you use here and uh, uh, in many industries especially in pharma and uh, textile industries they want to ensure that uh, the minimum uh, uh, water gets uh, forwarded. So, they, they try to remove it in the early stages itself. So, in such a cases a, a good water cooler is a necessity and next is air receiver and then you can have a air drying unit, air drying system. In the air drying system, we have adsorption type of dryers and absorption type of ref dryers and refrigeration type of dryers. So, there are three different types of dryers which are available in the market. So, an appropriate type has to be selected before we use it to the application. So, if you go to a pharma segment, so they use refrigeration and along with uh, adsorption type. So, like that, so the many types of in combination can also be used in certain places or you can choose any one of this uh, depending upon your the quality of the air required by you. And normally, normally commonly adsorption dryers are used for a large air flow capacities and in which the dew point up to minus 40 degree centigrade can be achieved. So, uh, that means you are uh, uh, almost removing the moisture to an 80 to 85 percent. So, that is the advantage here. So, whatever the moisture was there in the air, you are removing almost 80 to 85 percent of the moisture from the air here. And along with that, ahead of that, you can use a air pre filters which can help you to separate your dust and uh, little bit of moistures which are remaining and you can pass the quality air to the device. Now, one by one if I want to tell what is a reservoir or a receiver. Receiver is a uh, compressed air storage unit. So, air receiver it is an important accessory uh, which, which is a storage of energy. We store the air here in this reservoir and which can be kept horizontally or vertically. In some plants you can find it is placed horizontally and in some plants you can find it is placed vertically depending upon the uh, flow space availability for them. They can plan it either in the horizontal or in the vertical and re air receiver should be equipped with a delivery line and safety valves, drain cock and pressure gauge. You take any reservoir or the receiver. So, in the receiver uh, one safety valve on the top you have to fit because uh, if, if something extra pressure is being fed to the reservoir or the receiver, so it should not explode, it should not explode uh, or the damage to the uh, system should not occur. So, initially we use a spring set safety wall on the top and we set that at one level. Uh, so, as it increases, the pressure increases, uh, the safety valve will open and lose out the air to the atmosphere. So, thereby protecting the damage to the reservoir. And a drain cock, normally when you have a reservoir, the amount of moisture which is collected in the reservoir and other dust particles which are connected has to be removed frequently out. So, if you keep that in the reservoirs, it can cause a problem over a period of time. It can be carry forwarded to the equipments and can damage, can make a damage. So, we have to fit an auto drain valve so that automatically the collected moisture and dust can be thrown out of the system. And the pressure gauge to know at what pressure the system is working and the receiver is uh, running. So, that can be known by uh, people who are maintaining those kinds of systems. And drain connection located at the bottom of the reservoir is a mandatory without a drain no receiver should be allowed to install. So, you have to have a, a, a auto drain system along with a bottom drain facility. Now, 
I will be moving on to uh, types of filtration that we use. I have told we take the air and we compress it and we store it in a reservoir and then pass it to the uh, equipment machines. So, but before sending it to the machines, we dry the air, we remove the moisture and we also remove the dust particles which are present in the uh, air. So, the aim uh, of this is proper compressed air preparation is done uh, and uh, contamination is removed, moisture is removed and then the quality air enters the device level. So, here in the filters, we have a pre filters and uh, service units that we call it as FRC and fine and micro filters are available uh, and carbon filters which are uh, costly but uh, more widely used in pharma segments because they, they want a high quality air for their processes because tablets are powders are being mixed using air some in some vessels in many cases. So, in such cases the quality of air should be very high. So, in such an environment, so they all uh, do uh, a complete filtration like this. And uh, coming to the dryers, as I said, uh, refrigeration type is there, adsorption type is there and membrane type of dryers are available. Uh, the figure shows uh, air drying technique which is used in the absorption drying. So, in this case, we have a flux here and we make the air to pass from the bottom side and as it moves up from bottom to top, uh, the water particles get settled on this and uh, which slowly collects at the bottom and which is being drying at regular intervals. So, this we call it as a absorption dryers. Uh, here we use a materials like silica and uh, activated carbon, these kinds of elements are being used here and which can uh, hold the moisture and can be separate out. So, absorption drying is purely a chemical process. The moisture in the compressed air forms a compound with uh, drying agents in the tank. This causes the drying agent to break down and then discharge as a fluid at the base of the tank. Okay? So, these are the uh, types of uh, 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 dryers which, you, which we use in the absorption type. Here we have shown uh, refrigeration type of uh, adsorption type of dryers. So, here in the adsorption type what we have is there are two vessels, vessel 1 and vessel 2. Uh, the material is stored in this uh, both the things and uh, initially the air will be passed from one vessel and for a certain time uh, this, uh, uh, this will pass the air to the outlet and during that time the moisture gets absorbed here, absorbed here, okay? uh, it sticks to the particles here which are there okay? and then uh, dry air will move out and once this being saturated automatically we switch this to this side. This side will be uh, taken for a heating. So, they heat this and they remove the moisture, they dry it out all the elements within the vessel. So, in the second half cycle, this will supply the air. So, uh, for switching, auto switching valve will be provided normally. So, these kinds of uh, system will enable uh, you to supply continuous quality air. But normally uh, a switching type not, uh, not with single, it is a switching type with two vessels. So, this is the type. Here as you see, uh, you can compressed air is passed through a gel kind of thing uh, and as it passes it uh, sticks to the gels and uh, separates out. In the third figure, I am showing refrigeration dryers, refrigeration dryers. In the refrigeration dyers, we are using refrigeration uh, agents like Freon, Rayon, all those kinds of uh, systems and uh, uh, it is a closed loop system. Okay? So, as you know in the refrigerator, you will have a closed loop uh, environment. So, refrigerant will be running through and inside this. Uh, 
uh, and it will have a compressor in it and all those kinds. And as you uh, run this, uh, here we will have a cooling effect and the air will be passed like this and passes across this uh, tube and gets cooled and uh, uh, gets cooled and uh, during that process the water gets collected at the bottom here in the separator side. So, uh, it is uh, uh, it will have a heat exchanger uh, evaporator coils along with a, a machine compressor uh, refrigerant compressors and a closed loop uh, system uh, to have a refrigeration cycle within the system. Coming to the types of filters, uh, we have a cyclone filters and we have a sintered or a surface filters. So, here you can see a surface uh, filters, here it is a, a, a cyclone type of filters will be there. Uh, water and particles is thrown to the to bowel via a centrifugal force here in this case. Here it is uh, 40, 5 to 40 micro uh, um, um, micrometer uh, level uh, work. So, will be filtered using a, a some filter uh, uh, surface filter elements and the, these are the two uh, filters and if you want to further improvise your filtration, there are fine filters and micro filters which are available which can go up to uh, 0.01 micrometer liquid level. So, that is a high quality filtration can be done here and active carbon filters are also available which are which comes in the form of a candles. So, that can be used if you want a uh, further filtration. Normally, in conventional filters, so we can find a, a cup like shape like this, uh, a candle is fitted here and the air enters from here and hits the baffle plates here and circulates through this and passes to the exit side. So, this is a, a picture which is showing a one air filter which is uh, used in the air circulation. Now, I will be uh, talking about other additional devices which are used in the airlines. So, we extensively use air regulator. So, air regulator is a device which can uh, reduce your downstream pressures. So, a pressure regulator is used to keep the pressure in the uh, line constant or you can down it, you cannot increase it. You can just either keep it at same level or you can in, uh, down it to some pressures. So, a regulator can be a choice for that purpose. So, if you observe this figure, so uh, uh, you can lift this uh, thing and turn the knob as you turn the spring force gets adjusted and that in turn will put a pressure on this. Uh, so, uh, this is seated here. So, your air pressure increases when the air pressure increases, uh, a lift will be given by the air pressure to push this up. So, and uh, 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 that is how the regulation will happen. Uh, today, we have uh, discussed now about uh, the basics of uh, pneumatics. Uh, what is uh, how uh, the air can be used in uh, uh, industrial applications and how we generate the air uh, using different types of compressors and what are the requirements uh, before we send it into a device level, what are the preparations that we do uh, in terms of removal of moisture and uh, filtration part. And uh, now uh, uh, also we have discussed the regulation part of that regulation of air. So, how do we reduce it using a air regulators? Uh, in, in my subsequent section, I will be talking about driving elements that is different types of cylinders and other things which are available uh, in the pneumatics area. Uh, so, we will uh, meet again with a, a new topic called driving elements in the next class.